On today's show, the new Mach 1 is unveiled, we catch a Bronco grazing, and Hertz redefines long-term rentals. Plus, we take a look at some of your first cars. I'm Dana Simone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Buckle up. So last week we showed you a camouflaged Mustang Mach 1 driving around Dearborn. There was a lot left to the imagination, but those days are over. Footage has been released of the 2021 Mach 1 this morning and it looks pretty good. Aesthetically, there's a shout out to the original Mach 1 with an aggressive graphics package, revised front end and faux fog light elements in the grille. I mean, there's no shaker hood, mostly because Ford said it would be compromising engine cooling. But I guess it's better to be cool than look cool. With 480 horsepower, the motor is basically the same Coyote V8 found in the bullet, with a slightly different tune. The intake manifold, oil filter adapter, and engine oil coolers were brought over from the Shelby GT350. The Mach 1 should be the best handling of the non-Shelbys, with a mix of parts from all the best performance models in the Mustang lineup. In particular, the handling package gives buyers 150% more downforce than the Performance Pack Level 1, as well as the option for massive Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s, front and rear. The best part is that it comes stock with a Tremec 6-speed manual from the Shelby GT350. It also has a 10-speed automatic, but if you don't have to buy an automatic, don't. Speaking of cool Fords, Hagerty's own Camille Kaluski stumbled upon a Ford Bronco doing some high altitude testing in Colorado. He snapped these photos of Ford's new trail pony resting in a parking lot alongside an F-150 test mule. Despite being wrapped in a termite tent, we're able to decipher a few things about the long-awaited 4x4. Note the mirrors mounted on the A-pillars. On a Wrangler, they're mounted to the doors. And that means that when you take off the doors, the side mirrors go with it. But I mean, who needs those anyways? The tires stand out as well. They look like 35 inchers, which could give Wrangler owners a bit of tire envy. Ford knows their competition from Jeep is fierce, and it looks like they're coming out swinging. There's a lot more going on in these photos than we can cover here. So if you want all the details, click the link below and head over to Camille's article. And come back on July 9th for the car's reveal. Also, July 9th is OJ Simpson's birthday. No reason I'm mentioning that, just uh, thought you should know. And lastly, if you're shopping for a used car bargain, we have the suggestion that might surprise you. Hertz. That's right. After filing for bankruptcy in May, the rental company is unloading a lot of its fleet. Usually, a seller's financial problems are a buyer's good fortune, but Hertz is a mixed bag. Take this 2019 BMW 740i with 15,000 miles on the clock. Surely a bankrupt company wants to get rid of its depreciating assets quickly, right? But searching on Auto Tempest revealed several 740i's with very similar mileage and pricing. And I'm not sure $2,000 savings is worth buying a car driven by everyone in the world. But Hertz does it better in the minivan department. This Honda Odyssey EXL is about $4,000 cheaper than the comparable models we found. Let's call it the other people's kids vomit discount. But the cars look very clean and Hertz has an experienced maintenance team. As many racing drivers say, the fastest car in the world is a rental car. And if you buy a Hertz Camaro, here's hoping that they don't substitute it with a Fiesta at the counter. So coming up, we're looking at your first cars, but first. Bronco. Bronco. Ford Bronco. First four wheel drive sports car, blazing a new trail of excitement. The new Ford Bronco for 1966. A rough, tough, go-anywhere, climb-anything sports car. And now it's time for Haggerty's Digital Driveway, a virtual car show where we highlight the rides of our Haggerty community members. Last week we asked you to submit photos of your first car, and the community didn't disappoint. User Roger Ramjet's first car was a 1959 Fiat 500. Here it is next to his mom's 1956 Chevy, highlighting the difference between American and Italian transportation in the 50s. S. Bader bought this Ford Jeep in 1967 and still has it today. That's right, it's a Ford. Willys tends to get all the credit, but Ford actually made 250,000 of them for the U.S. effort in World War II. They look the same, but have the letter F stamped on some of the parts. So hang on to that, Spader. Hot Stuff bought this 1954 Bel Air when he was just 14 years old. His parents didn't let him drive it until he was old enough, so he rebuilt the motor. 
ambitious 14-year-old. Road Rage 67 has an equally ambitious story. He bought this 1967 Nova before he could drive and set to work doing some serious modifications. He still has it today, albeit with a nicer paint job. And lastly, me. So my first car was this Pontiac Grand Prix. I mean, look at that. The wing, the graphics, look how happy I was until that little incident with the headlight. Never has something so slow looked so fast. Who wrote this? It was a GT, it was fast. But anyways, that doesn't really matter because driving is about the freedom more than the speed, right? And if you'd like to see your car here in the future, go to community.haggerty.com and sign up. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and taking a look at my sweet Pontiac GT. Keep driving.